What's up guys, Jay Cutting from Fitness Culture. Today we're gonna to be talking about a question that we get all the time in our Facebook group. And that question is, can I have a cheat meal? Because when they come into the app, we give people macros. Um, we typically do just flexible dieting and we'll give them a set number of macros to hit daily or we'll put them on a carb cycling plan as well, all right? People wonder why we don't put cheat meals into their macro plans. And so today we're gonna to discuss why we don't do that and how you can fit a cheat meal into your week. But it's not really a cheat because you're gonna fit it into your macros. All right, so if you've ever done flexible dieting before, what, what that means is, say you have a set number of macros, you could have a small amount of carbohydrates in the morning and that would afford you to have more carbohydrates later on in the day, right? And so a lot of the times when people see their macro breakdown, uh, they don't know that they can kind of mix that up however they want. And that's how you're gonna be able to fit a cheat meal into the week, all right? The way that we normally do it, so we have two different approaches on how to fit a high, we'll call it a high calorie meal into your week, all right? So we're gonna call one conservative cheat meal. The other one's gonna be called epic cheat meal, all right? And this one's gonna be, you're gonna go a little over the top here. Think about The Rock when he does a cheat meal, okay? So the conservative cheat meal, all we're gonna be doing is restricting the amount of food, our macros for one day, and kind of saving those macros into our high calorie meal at the end of the day. It doesn't have to be at the end of the day, but in our example, we're gonna say at the end of the day here, all right? So the next way is the epic cheat meal. And on the epic cheat meal, I used to do these a lot. I wrote a diet a long time ago that ended up being a favorite of some of our clients that we worked with. It was called War on Carbs, and we'd basically restrict calories throughout the week just so we could go off one day out of the week and have an epic cheat meal. So the conservative cheat meal is just a little bit better though. You're gonna have better results that way because you're not just getting out of control, right? So we usually say epic cheat meals are reserved more for people that have a better body composition. So think guys that are closer to 10% body fat, somewhere around there, then you're gonna be able to handle something like that a little bit better. You're not gonna be able to get super, super shredded and keep going, but if you're on the maintenance, um, an epic cheat meal is probably doable. The conservative cheat meal is gonna be better that anyone can kind of just fit this into their macros, right? You're not just gonna go crazy on it and it's not gonna be one of these meals where you're eating 5,000 calories at one point because your body just really, to take in all those nutrients and not spill over on such a high calorie meal is gonna be hard, all right? So first thing we're gonna go into is kind of how you're gonna break this down on the conservative cheat meal. All right guys, to do this right, you're gonna first need to know what your macros are. So we'll put my macros up here. Typically when I cut, I try to do 300 grams of protein. I know that's pretty high, but I feel better on high protein. So that's kind of like where I like to keep it. 300 carbs and 100 fat, all right? We're gonna start there, and the first thing that you want to do is figure out what your cheat meal is gonna be, all right? Because you're gonna take the macros from that, you're gonna subtract it from your macros, and then you're gonna see what you have left over to consume before your cheat meal, all right? So the, the cheat meal that I've decided on is going to be for this conservative cheat meal, is gonna be two Big Macs and a small fry um, from McDonald's, all right? And I got these macros from my fitness pal. So that's 53 grams of protein, 121 carbs, and 69 grams of fat. So it's pretty high in fat right there. So we're gonna subtract that from our daily macros and it's gonna leave us with 247 grams of protein, 180 carbs, and 31 fat. I'm gonna break it up in four different meals before our cheat meal for that night, all right? So, Obviously, most people look at that. That's still pretty, that's obviously really high protein still. Carbs aren't bad at all. Fat's gonna be really low though. So we're gonna have to be really pay attention to the foods that we choose to make sure they're not too high in fat so we don't go over our uh, calories for the day, all right? All right, so right here, we have a breakdown of foods that I chose that would actually fit into those macros. A lot of people are gonna have less food than me because they're not as big as I am, but I'm just gonna go over kind of really quickly what I was able to fit into these macros, okay? So uh, for breakfast, nine egg whites, five ounces of chicken breast, and then we did a two servings of a fruit bowl. 10 a.m., we did a tuna fish sandwich. And then meal three, just cause we need to get that protein up. I did a post-workout shake right here with two scoops of protein. That's obviously gonna be a very low fat shake on this one. And so that keeps our fat nice and low there. And then on meal four, we did nine ounces of chicken breast, seven ounces of sweet potato, and then one pat of butter. I don't really know what that is. I really wouldn't do this if I was counting macros. I'd probably weigh the butter out in grams but that was just in my fitness pal and it fit, so I threw it in there today, all right? So um, at the end, that leaves us room for our two Big Macs and a small fry, and our totals, we were trying to get 300, 300, 100. We ended up with 303 protein, 294 carbs, and 98 fat, so we were still under a little bit, but that was close enough that I would call that an A-plus effort for the day, um, and we're still within our macros, so that's how we would fit that in on the conservative approach. All right, now we're gonna go over the epic cheat meal and how we would attack that, all right? So, what I picked for the epic cheat meal was a full stuffed crust pizza, two king size Snickers, and a pint of vanilla ice cream. 
I actually used to eat this on my Epic Sheet Meal nights. Actually, I'd eat a little bit more than this too, but anyway, I know it's disgusting. So anyway, the macros on that, 122 protein, 410 carbs, 160 grams of fat, all right? So that's a lot of calories just for the entire day, but it is an Epic Sheet Meal. So we're gonna go over an example of how we would take it for the, from the week. So again, my macros was 300, 300, and 100, um, and I, just took a little bit from each day, all right? So Thursday, I stole 100 carbs and 45 grams of fat, so that would leave us with 300 protein, 200 carbs, 55 fat for Thursday, and then we would take that down on Friday as well, same macros there, and that would leave us our Saturday cheat meal. We have 300 grams of protein, sorry, Saturday day, the entire day, we're able to fit in 300 grams of protein, 500 carbs, and 190 grams of fat for the day, and still we're gonna be Taking that number, obviously we'll subtract our Epic Sheet Meal calories, and then it'll give us the total for what we have to look at to hit before we do our Epic Sheet Meal. All right, so our total macros for the day before the Epic Sheet Meal is 178 protein, 90 carbs, and 30 grams of fat. So I just made it easy on myself. I picked the same foods and I just adjusted the portions of the meals. And I actually got rid of that protein shake because I don't know how a pizza got us to 121, 22 grams of protein, but it did, all right? So we, we're, we, it's taken up a lot of protein in our Epic Sheet Meal. That's kind of one, another reason that I don't like doing this because we're not spreading our protein out very well throughout the day, okay? So anyway, we just cut the portions down. So we have six egg whites, five ounces of chicken, and just one serving of the fruit bowl. Now we have a tuna fish sandwich that would actually kind of fit just on a tuna fish sandwich right here for our, our second meal. And then our third meal was nine ounces of chicken breast, a very small portion of sweet potato and then again with the one pat of butter, all right? So that gives us enough macros to fit in this huge meal at the end of the day. Watch out, uh, 160 grams of fat. A lot of people aren't gonna be able to handle that, so if you, go, if you go to attack something like this, watch yourself. But we got our totals today to 294 protein, 501 carbs, 185 fat. That's a little bit under, but I'd still give us an A for effort on that one as well. All right guys, that wraps it up today. I hope you got something out of this. Um, again, the reason that I really wanted to do this is because our community asked so much why we don't put cheat meals into their meal plans and really because that's the whole point of flexible dieting. You don't have to cheat. You can fit whatever you want into your diet if you plan accordingly. But remember, the epic cheat meal, there's, there's another part of nutrition that's uh, not just how much you're consuming but the quality of food that you're consuming, right? So um, it's fun to do every once in a while. Um, me and Alex were just talking. Alex is behind the camera right now. He said, how do you feel when you do that? Back in the day when I was younger, I sound like an old man right now. When I started doing a diet where I led in epic sheet meals, I would cut my carbs super, super low and my fat and just save up for these crazy epic sheet meals, right? So I started off by doing five days and then at the end of the week, I'd just go off. And then eventually when I got my body fat was so low, I was able to maintain the body fat and do it more frequently. And so I did, I would go basically two days, Monday, Tuesday, that night on Wednesday, I'd go off. And then Thursday, Friday, that night on Saturday, I'd go off. So I did that for a little while, like a few months, cause I was just having fun with it and just testing it out. But what I just told him is I used to bounce back really quickly from eating all that bad food. Now I just can't bounce back. It takes me multiple days. Like there's no way I could do that again. So just remember that it will take a toll on you if you try to do the epic sheet meals. Um, the conservative approach is the approach that we usually tell people to do because it's really not gonna throw you off your game plan um, and you're gonna keep be, uh, being able to be consistent and make progress doing it that way. Again, I hope you guys got something out of this video today. If you like this video, please give me a like, subscribe, and then in the comments, please tell me what you want me to cover next. Thank you.